Friends from St. Vincent that it refused nationals from cruise line. Grenadians called on to observe National Day of Prayer on Sunday. In the sports news, international athletic season announced for August to October 2020. And in Around the Globe, Ghana government blasts Bruce Golden's statement on election process. We'll be back with the details. Stay close. Broadcasting Network, I'm Kenroy Batiste. The Minister for Health is denying claims that his government turned away cruise ship workers. Christina John has more on this development. Health Minister Nicholas Steele refused statements made in an online eyewitness news article out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines titled, SVG Receives Grenadians Denied Entry by Their Country. It stated that Prime Minister Rav Gonzalez says on NBC Radio, the two Grenadians, along with eight Vincentians, were on a ship off Barbados that would be brought to SVG and quarantined. The article added that Prime Minister Rav Gonzalez says he was informed by head of Ports Authority in St. Vincent that the cruise lines could not bring the workers to Grenada on Wednesday because ports are closed. GBN's news desk sought clarity on the issue and had this response from Health Minister Nicholas Steele. That, that is not true. What happened with those? It was a carnival as well. And as you know, a carnival ship came on Sunday. And then carnival called us on Monday to say, oh, they forgot about two crew members that were on a different ship. Can they come with the two? And as far as I'm aware, I didn't make the communication, but as far as I'm aware, the message to them was, sure, you can come with the, sh uh, the whole ship for just two, or you can uh, send them on an aircraft from Barbados because it's just two, and we leave the options up to you. That was the decision from health. We were prepared to take the additional two, um, whichever way they saw fit. So my assumption is they brought them to St. Vincent to fly them in as opposed to being to have the ship make two stops. The minister says at the moment they do not have any secured accommodation should another batch of cruise workers show up at this time. Uh, accommodation at the moment, no. Um, there are individuals that are or individuals uh, locations that were willing to do it for a fee, um, which was the fee that we had informed the cruise ship of. So some of the cruise ships are willing to, so those that are willing to pay accommodations for their crew, yes, those accommodations are ready. Those that are not, we have to wait until our um, arranged government draft accommodations are free, so that is two weeks from Sunday. He further stated that they will not turn away the cruise workers if they should come, but it has to be some form of agreement with the cruise lines in covering the cost of the sailors in quarantine. It is still under discussion with them. They, they had given an ideal schedule um, of this weekend, um, and we are uh, telling them, sure, we will not refuse them, but if they don't want to pay um, for accommodations for their own crew in, in quarantine, then it would have to be once you have available space. If they are willing to pay for their crew in quarantine, then they can send them at any point in time. And once it's an approved facility, we have no problem with that. Two batches of cruise workers are already on island, amounting to 45. The minister impresses that there are no challenges in them adhering to protocols. Chrislina John, GBN News. The Grenada Conference of Churches is preparing for the National Day of Prayer on Sunday. All Grenadians are called on to stop and pray for the nation. Rena Pear tells us more. From 6 a.m. Sunday, May 16th to 6 p.m. Monday, May 17th, all religious denominations, their members, and all other Grenadians will join together to pray for the nation under the theme, Grenada for God. The call for a National Day of Prayer was first made by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell. He called on the Alliance of Evangelical Churches and the Conference of Churches to pray for Grenada through this COVID-19 crisis. Reverend Silbert Prescott, chairman of the Conference of Churches in Grenada, gave an outline of the day's activity. 
These prayer intervals would follow a simple pattern um, occurring every three hours. That is, at beginning at 6 a.m., and then at 9 a.m., and then at 12 a.m., and it will continue throughout the day until 6 p.m. on the 17th of May. During these prayer pauses, a member of the Evangelical Alliance of Churches and the Conference of Churches in Grenada will respectively offer prayers for three minutes, which will be a total of six minutes. Some of the teams at these prayer pauses will be around um, the teams of adoration, confession, thanksgiving, intercession, and supplication. Every three hours throughout the day, a different representative from a religious denomination is expected to pray for the nation. A number of media houses has also been engaged to bring the day of prayer live on television and social media platforms so that all Grenadians can participate. Devon Roche, president of the Alliance of Evangelical Churches, spoke of other aspects of the day's event. The National Hour of Prayer will see us praying um, from the Zoom platform for various right, um, sectors of our society. We'll be praying with the RGPF, we'll be praying for frontline workers in the medical fraternity, we'll be praying for educators, and um, obviously we'll be praying for the different arms of government. right? And so we are looking forward to this. and. Um, uh, we are encouraging the nation to tune in. This will happen at 4.30 p.m. on Sunday. And as was mentioned, uh, we intend to utilize the GIS Facebook page and um, uh, Mikey Live uh, MTV uh, Facebook page. We also uh, will stream via Hard Talk and um, some of these other platforms for that uh, press session. Churches will also be using social media platforms to do their own prayer activity during the day. For GBN News, I am Rina Pear reporting. Well, Minister for Religious Affairs Emmeline Pear says the doors of churches are expected to reopen within a week or so. The minister, who was speaking at a live press conference this morning, explained that they are in the final stages of implementing proper protocols for the operation of churches in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Say that consultation has been taking place over the past week. We are now on what is called the final draft of the protocols, and I believe between tomorrow and Monday, those protocols will be announced, and we will be basically speaking to the reopening of churches, which I anticipate would be within another week or so. Several weddings have been postponed because of the closure of churches. Chairman of the Conference of Churches, Reverend Silbert Prescott, stated that there is no data at hand to show statistics on this matter. During times of crisis, opportunities and uh, challenges present themselves. The global crisis brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic has brought on significant changes. One of the modifications has to do with the way churches conduct praise and worship. Christina John has been speaking with President of the Alliance of Evangelical Churches, Pastor Devon Rache, on the new normal. Virtual worship is the new norm for many denominations. However, with so many people out of jobs and some scrambling for basic and other necessities, people are of the belief that churches can and should be doing more during this time of crisis. President of the Alliance of Evangelical Churches, Pastor Devon Rashi, responded, saying he believes everything depends on perspective and expectations. That expression, he believes, comes from people who are missing. Informed. Uh, we have been doing a lot. I know churches, as churches, we have done thousands of food baskets, right? However, unlike others, 
you would not see the church posts and pictures of uh, the persons that we are giving to this basket, this basket too, because it goes against the fundamental principle of the, the church that what when we do good, it is not to impress the public um, or to put out there. Our good that we do is out of our responsibility to God, and God has suddenly called us to respond to those in need and, and so forth. So Conducting vote your service has created a window of opportunities, Pastor Rashi says. However, it also came with its challenges. Um, we have seen an opportunity in this, in that we have been able, as the body of Christ, to have a wider reach. Um, many of our churches um, that were not utilizing social media platforms before are now utilizing these platforms. And we have found that more people are actually engaging our services than when we would meet physically. But one of the, cha one of the challenges that we have confronted is uh, the inability to reach persons who do not have access to the technology. In terms of praise and worship, the AEC president says they have had to scale down and make adjustments. We have had to adjust um, a lot of uh, the structure of the services because as you will appreciate people's attention span online is different from when you meet physically um, therefore um, people are people are prepared to give shorter time for services so many of our services are shorter um, in terms of our praise and worship because people have to have to be observing physical distancing um, worship teams for the most part were not able to come together to actually do sessions of praise and worship Christina John, GBN News. Police have arrested and charged a 31-year-old St. Andrew woman for violating the Emergency Powers Act. Akisha Felix of Cook Hill Road, Grenville, was charged by police this afternoon. The charges stem from a social gathering held yesterday, which was streamed live on the social media platform Facebook. Felix, who is an employee of the Grenada Broadcasting Network, was charged for violating Section 9 of the Emergency Powers Act. It states that no person should host or attend any social activity of any description. The Grenada Broadcasting Network understands that a party was held at a venue in St. Andrew to celebrate Felix's birthday. GBN's Managing Director Odette Campbell was asked to comment on the reports today. She told GBN News that the information has been drawn to the attention of the company's management and that the matter is under review. Campbell said that the GBN could not comment further on the matter at this time since it is subject to an investigation by the Royal Grenada Police Force. You're watching News at 7. Still to come from us, government receives some 200 applications for the resumption of work on construction projects. And CXC sticks to July for regional examinations. We'll talk about all that soon in a while. Republic Bank assures all personal, small business, commercial and corporate banking customers of our continued support during these uncertain times. We are pleased to advise that all our credit officers are available to assist you with navigating your finances during these challenging times. We encourage you to contact your relationship officer at the bank for discussion and advice on your particular circumstance for a solution that meets your specific needs. Additionally, you may email us at customercare at republicgrenada.com or send us a message on Facebook or call 444-2265. We look forward to continue offering the best possible quality and personalized service to you. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. In our part of the world, we need to be prepared for natural disasters like storms and hurricanes, even outside of the season. I'm sure you'll agree that keeping our loved ones, homes, and businesses safe is important. So, I came up with a few quick tips to help you stay safe. First, make a family disaster plan and ensure that everyone in your household is familiar and comfortable with it. Remember to add batteries and flashlights to your emergency kit. Now for electrical safety. 
Familiarize yourself with your electrical panel as it may be necessary to switch off the power during a storm or flood. Make sure you install a transfer or isolation switch to prevent your generator feeding electricity to Grenlec's line. If trees are too close to power lines, call Grenlec at 237 for advice. By following these easy steps, you will be well on your way to being hurricane ready. Don't be caught off guard by natural disasters. Prepare now. For more information, visit Grenlec.com. It's new, innovative and classy, and it cut above the rest. Your one-stop shop for bathtubs, kitchener, customized doors and windows, and even a new paint job. We also sell quartz and solid surface countertops. At Eminent Hardware, we offer best prices, excellent service, efficiency, and reliability. Visit us at Dusty Highway, Grand and St. George, or call telephone number 440-6757. M&N Hardware, from foundation to roof, let's build together. Our superheroes are all among us. They don't wear capes nor have superpowers. In fact, they appear to be quite ordinary. They are the ones who provide us with food. They are our farmers, our grocery store workers, our vendors. They are our fishermen. They are the ones who heal us, our doctors and medical practitioners. They are the ones who protect us, our police officers. They are all the other essential workers who make this period bearable. And how can we forget our teachers, dedicated to educating our children no matter the circumstance? To everyone who is doing their part to make sure the wheel keeps turning. Ariza says, thank you. More than ever, Flo is working hard to keep you connected to the things that matter most. Your family, your work, and your favorite entertainment. We are also providing Flo study free of charge so students can stay connected and up to date with their schoolwork. And because your safety is our highest priority, you can manage your account from the safety of your own home through the MyFlo app. We are here for you, keeping you connected. The Grenada Bankers Association wishes to advise the public that effective Tuesday, May 12th, 2020, commercial banks will open Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. How's going on, boy? Hey, hey, good old things. Hey, day easy. Yeah. Boy, in line, boy. Your house looking a real good day. Boy, it's thanks to the hardworking and professional staff at the Housing Authority of Grenada. They handed me real nice. They did my plan, they did the construction, and I didn't even have to worry about a thing. They were there with me every step of the way, supervising the job, asking me about my concerns, giving me feedback as a house took shape. They were there from start to finish, and even put the keys in the palm of my hand. I give them an A for customer service. Oh, it's people from housing bad boy. Boy, not bad. Excellent. If you're thinking about constructing your home, why not consult the housing authority of Grenada? You could visit them right down in the Sandino complex or give them a call 440-1015 or 440-1016. Or check out their website, hag473.com. They go handle you. They go jog your blocks. They go draw your plan. They go talk your materials. <laughs> hey, man, where you going? The Housing Authority of Grenada is your choice for affordable housing and a stress-free construction experience. GBN leads, the others follow. This segment is brought to you by Republic Bank. Republic Bank assures all personal, small business, commercial, and corporate banking customers of our continued support during these uncertain times. We are pleased to advise that all our credit officers are available to assist you with navigating your finances during these challenging times. We encourage you to contact your relationship officer at the bank for discussion and advice on your particular circumstance for a solution that meets your your specific needs. Additionally, you may email us at customercare at republicgrenada.com or send us a message on Facebook or call 444-2265. 
We look forward to continue offering the best possible quality and personalized service to you. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. We're reporting the day's news. This is News at 7 up to Wednesday. The Ministry of Infrastructure Development received some 200 applications for the resumption of work on construction projects around Grenada. With 400 more expected over the next few days, government says there is need to add to the number of site inspectors on the ministry's roster. There are 30 inspectors currently employed with the ministry, but Minister for Infrastructure Development Gregory Bowen says they plan to train almost 100 more in an effort to speed up the inspection process. The larger, we have some pretty large projects, but they have all the resources to put things in place. This is small and medium sized ones that, you know, will take up most of our time. And the Ministry of Health will certainly have to train an next batch. We'll have to train an next batch of inspectors to go over there. Because what we want them to do is to commence, but at the same time, we also have to maintain the monitoring so that we do not have, um, but you do not have any incident with respect to infections in the, in the construction sector. These are the persons that will be able to go to inspect the work site to see that you have the wash basins where they should be, to see that you have the sanitation systems where they should be. And uh, we, from the ministry, may inspect something else. But I think the focus is definitely on them because we want to prevent the spread of COVID. And the Ministry of Health, uh, I believe they'll be training a figure like a 30 in the minimum start with us. And these persons, so if 30 persons go out in one day, they can do 30 of the 600. So in 20 days, they can rotate within one month, every site yeah. should be inspected. Right. Minister Bowen says the aim is to be able to get inspectors to a work site 24 hours after the application was received at the ministry. Now, the Caribbean Examinations Council is moving forward with the July date set for the administration of the CCSLC, CSEC and CAPE examinations. This follows the decision by the Council for Human and Social Development on Education on Friday. Dr. Wayne Wesley, Registrar and Chief Executive Officer of CXC, in a media briefing on Thursday, explained to regional journalists within CARICOM the significance of the July exams and how they will be rolled out. Gerard Joseph listened in on the brief and has this report. CXC is forging ahead with July's schedule exams, which has been delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. 30,000 students for CAPE and 120,000 for CSEC are expected to sit the exams, which now consist of a moderated SBA and multiple choice paper. French, Portuguese and Spanish students, plus human and social biology and visual arts, however, have additional components both at the CSEC and KEEP levels. E-testing will be conducted in the countries with the capacity, while paper-based exams will be available for other countries. Dr. Wayne Wesley, registrar of CXC, says health protocols of the individual countries are expected to be followed and expresses confidence in the exam method chosen, despite the concerns of students' readiness. Uh, we would have done extensive analysis in ensuring that we are able to cover all the necessary skills and competencies, and where those were, we were unable to assess those, additional components would have been required. So it is not just a multiple choice, but it is important to note that the SBA is also one of the modalities for assessing those critical skills and competencies. SBAs have been extended to June, and the Council is working with the various countries to iron out any issues. Dr. Wesley adds that marking will be done online if necessary for papers that require such, and teachers will not have to travel. While admitting to the psychological impact of the pandemic on students, the CXC registrar says the reduction of the effects is their focus. The decision from CARICOM is clear. There is a date for the examinations now, and this is not a time to create any level of uncertainty 
uh, with the students or candidates who are being prepared. The examinations is July. As it relates to technology, as I indicated earlier, where the infrastructure challenges are insurmountable, then those persons will have access to the paper-based modality to write their examinations. The results of the exams are due in the first week of September. I am Gerard Joseph for DBN News. This one to report forecasters are pointing to a possible named tropical system off the southeastern U.S. coast this weekend. The National Hurricane Center is forecasting an 80% chance of tropical development over the next five days and a 70% chance over the next 48 hours. It says the system is likely to become a tropical or subtropical storm by late Friday or Saturday when it is located near the northwestern Bahamas. Now, this could be the sixth consecutive year with a storm forming before the 1st of June, the official start of the hurricane season. If the system were named, it would be Arthur, the first name on this year's Atlantic hurricane list. Police have arrested and charged a third person in connection with the May 5th drug bus at Mabuya St. John. The two men previously charged or currently on bail. We get more in this report. A bus driver of St. Vincent and the Grenadines has been arrested and charged in connection with the May 5th drug bust at Mabuya St. John. Police say 48-year-old Conley Charles has been nabbed by police after a fishing boat was intercepted in the waters outside Harveyville Carrier Coup while en route from mainland Grenada on Monday, May 11th. Charles has been charged with trafficking in a controlled drug and illegal entry into the state of Grenada and remanded in custody to appear in court on Monday, May the 18th. Charles is among three men charged in connection with the early morning drug bust. The other men, Kevin Henry, 28 years old fisherman, and Sherwin Mitchell, 33 years old construction worker, both of Guaf St. John, were jointly charged with trafficking in a controlled drug after the recovery of 58 pounds of compressed cannabis sometime after midnight on May 5th, 2020, at Maboya St. John. The recent drug bust also resulted in the seizure of two fishing vessels. The drug is worth an approximate street value of 131,602 EC dollars. Henry and Mitchell were each granted $25,000 bail with one surety. They were ordered to surrender all travel documents and report to the Guelph Police Station every Monday and Friday between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. They will make their next court appearance on June the 12th. Cherry and Blackman Stephen, GBN News. Before the break, a mother and her brother who were recently remanded to Her Majesty's prisons for burning two young boys have been granted bail. Here's what we can tell you. Both made their first court appearance on Monday and were initially denied bail. However, the mother was later granted bail in the sum of $10,000 with two sureties, while her brother was granted bail in the sum of $7,500 with two sureties. The boys aged nine and three were reportedly held down and their hands dozed with hot water. One after eating peanut butter without permission and the other for using a relative's cell phone to play games. The children have since been removed from the home. The two will appear at the Gov Magistrates Court on Monday, the 27th of July, to answer two counts of wounding. Police investigations are continuing into the incident. Still ahead from us, Liat extends suspension of services and ADM Caribbean Agro Industries resumes operation. News at 7, stay with us. Grenada Distillers Limited joins the government and people of Grenada, Caricou, and Pretty Martinique in the fight against COVID-19. Only together we can beat this pandemic. As a corporate citizen, we have temporarily stopped the production of rum, and our focus has been on the production of a sanitizing solution to assist in the fight against this dreadful pandemic. 
we have commenced free distribution to the senior citizens' homes, children's homes, and other vital organizations around the country, and made this product available to you at supermarkets and pharmacies island-wide. We encourage you to please listen and obey the guidelines issued by our health authority and the Royal Grenada Police Force. Together, and only together, we can beat COVID-19. Shipping is fast and reliable. Always on time, safe and affordable. Friendly staff here to connect you. Tropical worldwide, you must get you. Shop online and you get it on time. Hassle free to meet your deadline. Consolidate any size, any load with tropical shipping. So we ship everything. I can't wait to ship with tropical. I can't wait. No packets to be closed. No, I cannot wait to ship with tropical. A local agents, George F. Huggins and Company, Grenada Limited. A telephone number 440-8787. Or visit our website at www.tropical.com. Email us at grenadasales at tropical.com. Tropical Shipping. Committed to island life. Are you looking for quality herbs and herbal supplements? Or are you thinking about having a complete body cleanse to jumpstart your health? Then no need to look further. Visit Nirvana Natural Health Clinic Detox Center and Natural Health Store. We carry a wide range of herbal products for kidney and gallstone cleansing, male sexual enhancement formulas, asthma and sinusitis, gas and bloating, acid reflux, constipation, arthritis, imbalanced hormones, female health issues, liver cleansing, weight loss, and so much more. Also available, colonic irrigation, holistic health consultations, essential oils, and diffusers. Look out for our online natural health store coming soon. Call 231-6642-418-7115 or 449-7753 to find out about our delivery options or to book an appointment. Visit us at Belmont St. George's, close to the Forledge, Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Nirvana Natural Health Clinic. Detox your way to health. The NIS is committed to your well-being and continues to provide the same excellent service to you from the safety of your home or office. Therefore, from April 2020, all remittances must be submitted electronically to NIS Remit at nisgrenada.org. The e-remittance template can be downloaded from our website at www nisgrenada.org forward slash e-submission. Alternatively, you can provide us with your email address and the required Excel spreadsheet will be sent to you. Call 440-3309 or chat with us on social media for more information. NIS, serving you because we care. This is GBN. We've got the means, the power, and the medium. This segment is brought to you by Flow. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited Flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 70 channels and 12 in HD. All for $200 a month with the new all-in bundle. With Flow, it only gets better. Hello again. The Indian community in Grenada has collaborated with various food outlets and recently presented $32,500 worth of food vouchers to the Ministry of Social Development. These vouchers are to be given to needy families throughout the country during the COVID-19 pandemic. The vouchers were presented by Dr. Vadinja Singh on behalf of the Indian community. Love has to be put into action and action is service. So in these challenging times, the Indian community, or I shall say the Grenadian Indian community, Indian business community, under the guidance of Mr. Arun Majestic, has come together 
to help serve and assist some of the members of our community to right these circumstances. So let's stay all together and be hopeful. And I assure you that we'll all come out of this situation much more stronger than ever. The Indian community has gathered almost $32,500 and in collaboration with Foodland, Food Fair and Hotspot, we have arranged the food vouchers which will be distributed to the needy people and the government will be the one who will be choosing where these vouchers needs to be distributed. Thank you so much. All right, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Social Development, Chrissy Worm Charles, and Foreign Affairs Minister Peter David express thanks to the Indian community on behalf of government. As we work together, um, ensuring that our country, especially our vulnerables, have access to quality food during this period, we thank the Indian community again for showing that together we are in this together. It shows what good things can come out of a crisis and that, that there are persons who step up to the plate, persons who do what they can to help the, the less fortunate in our society. So on behalf of the government, I'd like to thank you both collectively and, and, and individually for assisting in getting uh, the, uh, the people who need it most. Because in this crisis, there are people who are hurting, and we know that, and the fact that it is recognized by the Grenada Indian community shows two things. One, that they are concerned, but two, also, that they are deeply integrated in our society, and that the Indian community have now, uh, by stepping forward, has indicated that they are, are joining with us to try to build and develop this country. Liat has extended its suspension of passenger services until the end of the month. This comes as the airline continues to monitor the region's reaction to COVID-19. It's the rest in this report. The current border closures and travel restrictions within the regional network have prompted the regional airline to further extend the suspension of its services at this time. Because there are ongoing discussions about the reopening of borders, Liat's chief executive officer, Julia Reefer jones has said that no firm date has been set to facilitate regional travel, and that consequently meant that passengers were unable to travel across the Liat network. Passengers booked during the extended period of suspension will automatically have their bookings cancelled and will receive full credit for future travel. They will be able to rebook when the airline announces the resumption of passenger services. The CEO reaffirmed that plans are being put in place to resume operations as soon as territories indicate timelines for the reopening of their borders. She made mention of the airline's strict cleaning protocols for its aircraft to ensure the health and safety of its passengers and staff. Liat is currently operating with a skeletal staff. However, the airline continues to offer charter and cargo services. For GBN News, Beverly Tellisford. All right, stay tuned for this evening's GBN I Saw. Compliments, Claire Vision. I sent you. A good eye captures all. GBN I Saw is brought to you by Claire Vision. You know us, but we knew. You feel at home with every visit. An experienced team offering personalized courtier service and trendy brand name lifestyle products. We're changing the vision care landscape one customer at a time. Vision Eye Center. People and technology coming together to help you see the world with a clearer vision. Tonight's Eyes Are features video footage of a cat dancing to someone's singing. Somebody can beat her, she dancing like You can send in your photo and video submissions via our social media platforms. We'll be right back. Stay with us. You're watching the news.
you know, we are adapting to meet the changing needs of our shareholders and members. Times are changing, and with the changing times comes a whole new way to do business. Our parents may have done their banking a different way. Communal's state-of-the-art online banking and international debit card allows members to do business with great ease. It's like literally having a branch in your very own hands. Need a loan? Apply online from the comfort of your own home anywhere in the world and your request will be dealt with remotely. Want to transfer between your accounts or another shareholder? No wait time for transactions to update. Voila! Who needs receipts when you can receive them via e-statements on your mobile device and save the environment? Not a communal member? You can join our family today by applying online at Communal. We see you working hard to ensure that you save, invest, and grow. Communal, join us today. This will be the best financial decision you have ever made. My name is Hollis, Mr. Kilamak, and I endorse this message. Esplanade Mall, something for everyone. Go on a shopping spree today and experience some magic. The Grenada Distillers Limited joins the government and people of Grenada, Caribou, and Pitti Martinique in the fight against COVID-19. Only together we can beat this pandemic. As a corporate citizen, we have temporarily stopped the production of rum, and our focus has been on the production of a sanitizing solution to assist in the fight against this dreadful pandemic. We have commenced free distribution to the senior citizens' homes, children's homes, and other vital organizations around the country, and made this product available to you at supermarkets and pharmacies island-wide. We encourage you to please listen and obey the guidelines issued by our Health Authority and the Royal Grenada Police Force. Together, and only together, we can beat COVID-19. The Grenada Bankers Association wishes to advise the public that effective Tuesday, May 12, 2020, commercial banks will open Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. This is GBN. We've got you covered. Weather for Grenada, Caracou, and Petit Martinique valid for tonight and the following three days. Weather tonight mostly fair and breezy. Tonight's minimum temperature 25.5 degrees Celsius. Wind east northeasterly to east southeasterly at 14 to 24 miles per hour. Seas moderate, waves 4 to 6 feet in open water. Tides high at 10 p.m., low at 3 a.m. Sunrise tomorrow morning, 5.44. The weather on Friday, the 15th day of May, partly cloudy and breezy with light, isolated showers overnight. On Saturday the 16th, partly cloudy, breezy and hazy with light showers occasionally. And on Sunday the 17th, Mostly fair and breezy with light, isolated morning showers. Sports News next.
Good evening, sporting fans. An international athletic season of one-day meetings is taking shape between August and October this year following the commitment of most continental tour Golden Wonder Diamond League meeting directors to organize their events on rescheduled dates in 2020. A small number of countries will be able to stage meetings through June to July, but the international season is likely to commence in earnest directly after the national championships window of August 8th to 9th. Several continental tour gold, silver and bronze meetings will go ahead as planned. However, due to the uncertainty created by the COVID-19 pandemic, Diamond Leagues will be announced individually and will neither include a series uh, point score nor overall winners. World Athletics President Sebastian Coe has praised the cooperative efforts of meet organizers to work with the IAAF to give athletes a substantial competitive season. Three-time All-American and one-time national champion Kieran Charles of Grenada is moving upward in his studies and athletic career. Charles, who is a former student athlete of the St. Andrews Anglican Secondary School and Ace Track Club, has secured a spot at the University of Albany. The Grenadian athlete left on, a, on an athletic champion, a scholarship to Monroe College around two years ago. This one to report, President of Cricket West Indies, Ricky Skerich, this week strongly hinted that he expects to see the CPL franchise take action against veteran batsman Chris Gale following a recent public outburst which mainly disparaged former teammate and Jamaica Talawa's assistant coach, Ram Noah Sawan. However, many are now asking why Cricket West Indies not take any action itself. International cricket analyst Fahir Mohammed chimes in on the situation. Ricky Skerritt seems to have suggested that maybe, just maybe, the West Indies uh, authorities don't have uh, the, the, the leeway to sanction Gale, whether or not he's contracted or on a retainer with Cricket West Indies, and certainly might be expecting or indeed hoping that some sanction would be taken by his new franchise, be it the St. Lucia Zooks or the Caribbean Premier League itself, uh, for the, the nature of his rather unsavory comments towards Ramnari Sarwan on YouTube. Uh, it's an interesting situation because it does leave uh, open the issue of whether or not the CPL will take action and if they don't, uh, what can Cricket West Indies do? Fazi Mohammed talking there. He believes that despite Gale's big name in cricket, he should not receive any leniency shows uh, once more a situation where because of the profile of the individual, he or she, whatever the case may be, may appear to be given some leeway. Let's see how it goes. This issue has been given far too much oxygen because it's really infantile behavior by Gale and he deserves the fullest sanction that could be levied against him. Well, with a focus on rebuilding for the 2020 CPL season, the beleaguered Jamaica Talawa's franchise has opted to retain four players, including star player Andre Russell, for the new season. The franchise that has borne the brunt of public criticism from former player Chris Gale and Russell has also retained Roveman Powell, O'Shane Thomas and Chadwick Walton. The CPL is scheduled to take place between August 19th and September 26th. But the tournament organizers are closely watching the current situation with COVID-19 and are liaising with medical advisors and governments. And England's Culture Secretary says the government is opening the door for the return of professional football in June. Oliver Dowden says Thursday's meeting with the Football Association, Premier League and English Football League was positive for the sport to resume. He notes that plans should include widening access for fans to view live coverage and ensure finances from the game's resumption support the wider football family. The Premier League met on Monday to discuss Project Restart and hopes for a return to action on June 12th with matches played behind closed doors. That is the sports news for the moment.
Time to bring you up to speed with Around the Globe. The Ghana government has described as exceptionally partisan statements made by the former Jamaica Prime Minister Bruce Golden, who led an organization of American states, OES Observer Team, to the March 2nd regional and general election. Golden on Wednesday told the OES Permanent Council that the poll was being rigged at the declaration of results by the Guyana Elections Commission, GCOM. He said the ongoing national recount of ballots has so far showed variation in results from the ongoing recount compared to the results that were declared by Region 4 returning officer Clermont Mingo. Mr. Golden said, quote, I have never seen such a transparent effort to alter the results of an election, unquote. Providing comparisons of the Mingo Declaration with the statements of poll and statements of recount from the current uh, recount exercise, he said it takes an extraordinarily courageous mind to produce fictitious numbers when such a sturdy paper trail exists. Three people were shot dead in St. Philip, Barbados, early this morning. According to reports from Nation News, police have not yet identified the deceased, but said they were a 42-year-old woman, her 24-year-old son, and another 23-year-old male. Family and friends were consoling each other as tears flowed. Residents were tight-lipped about the situation, and family members said they were not in a position to speak. However, one neighbor who did not want to be identified said she was concerned about the violence in the area because there are many children who live in the neighborhood. A test to find out whether people have been infected with coronavirus in the past has been approved by health officials in England. Public Health England said the antibody test developed by Swiss pharmaceutical company Roche was a very positive development. The blood test looks for antibodies to see if a person has already had the virus and might now have some immunity. Until now, officials have said such tests are not reliable enough. And at least five people have been killed and 14 more wounded after Taliban militants launched an attack in the eastern Afghan city of Gardez on Thursday. According to reports, a truck packed with explosives blew up near a military court. An interior ministry spokesman said dozens of civilians are fair to be dead and wounded. It comes just two days after attacks on a hospital and a funeral that left at least 56 people dead, with President Ashraf Ghani ordering the military to switch to offensive moors. That is Around the Globe for now. We'll come back to remind you of the headlines. A reminder of the headlines if you're just tuning in to the broadcast. Government refutes claims from St. Vincent that it refused nationals from Cruise Line. Grenadians called on to observe a national day of prayer on Sunday. In the Sports News International Athletic Season announced for August to October 2020. And in Around the Globe, Guyana government blasts Bruce Golden's statement on election process. If you missed any part of this newscast, the repeat of it will be broadcast at 10 o'clock tonight. Continue to follow us online, gbn.gd, on GBN Television Facebook page and YouTube channel for these and other stories. I'm Ken Roy Batiste. That's all from us in our newsroom. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night.